Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking with you guys a little bit about uh, drift car cooling issues and some tips. Uh, so here we have my it's 95 S14 Kuki front, 2JZ uh, GTE VVTi swap, and I have the radiator, intercooler, oil cooler, and power steering cooler all in the front. Um, I don't have a rear mount radiator like a lot of guys do, but uh, I feel like my cooling system on here is fairly successful. I'm sure I could improve it a little bit, but for the most part, my car doesn't really get like super hot until after like four back-to-back -back runs, um, and that's when you actually kind of have to let it sit in uh, and cool down a little bit. We make the strings louder. So the point of this video isn't to tell you exactly what to do to like, you know, do this, 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 and this, and it'll, it's going to make your cooling system just perfect. But it's going to talk, I'm going to go into like a little bit of the mentality, um, that I had like designing this or kind of putting this whole system together. So when somebody's having issues with their, their drift car overheating, what, uh, the first thing you got to kind of ask or talk to them about is, uh, you know, like, is the, is the engine healthy? You don't have a blown head gasket. You don't have anything wrong with that. Your water pump's good. And there's enough cooling, like, enough coolant in the system with a proper, you know, it's bled properly. So there's no air in the system. Because if you have a little pocket of air down here in the, in the water pump, it's going to cavitate, um, you know, and, and that's not good. It ain't going to pull any air. And then that little piece of your cooling system is going to expand rapidly and, uh, you know, and then you're just going to have a lot of issues with it, you know, like gurgling and blowing, you know, if you pop off the cap, it'll blow off like a, you know, like a well. But so the, the weakest point in my system right now so far is this right here. And that's because the heater hose is a little bit above the, the radiator cap. So this is taller. So if there's going to be a bubble, it's going to be right there. It's going to start there, uh, which I, I've bled it a lot. So I think I've got it, it most, you know, most of the way out of there. But what I could do to improve this is put a, like a little bleeder screw. And I actually have a little thing. I just, you know, it hasn't got that hot anyhow. So I don't really think it's, it's too much of an issue for me, but next season I'm definitely putting, or here shortly, I'm going to put a, a bleeder on that. So another thing is the, the fans. You got to see kind of what fans you have. I have dual uh, puller fans right now. This is a, like a 3100, uh, uh, CFM, you know, in like the, the perfect conditions that it'll pull for both the fans. But you'll notice see how big those uh, those motors on the fans are. They're huge. They're, uh, I forget exactly the watt on them. But, uh, so I have some pretty pretty heavy gauge wire running up to them and I have two, two individual relays for each fan so that they're not drawing a lot of current, making the relay hot, making the wire hot, and uh, so that they could continue, you know, pulling enough air with uh, you know no wiring issues and I'll put a link to those fans in the description basically it's a set of like universal summit racing fans uh, a lot of times if you're like doing a custom setup and you need a radiator or fans you could get on summit racings a lot a lot of times like their brand of stuff has a lot of like really good universal stuff that, that's fairly priced so uh, a quality radiator is uh, is key I have a, a coil rad and this is the end flow so you'll see this right here and then there's another little tab on the bottom and then so basically the hot the hot coolant comes out of here it goes down back up and then back down and then it goes to the the lower radiator hose down there at the bottom um so then kind of why i'm talking about that is it it gives it a lot of time to actually cool off because it's it's going down it's going up it's going back down so it has a lot of t time to actually cool itself off um, so like, for example, if you're running a rear mount radiator and you have this crazy ass pump that, you know, flows like, you know, 150 gallons per minute or so, something crazy like that, um, it, the coolant is going to be traveling too fast. And so it's not going to actually cool. It's just going to run right over it and it, it's not even going to give it a chance to cool. So the, the inflow gives it a really good chance to actually flow kind of slow through it and actually cool off the coolant going back to the engine. I also have uh, this front mount intercooler, not front mount, it's more of a mid mount intercooler. So and the, the, that's another key is about having the, the really big fans is because you could put a little eBay fan next to this one and when there's nothing in front of it, then they flow similar, you know, they feel about the same, you know, you're sticking your hand in front of it. But you stick 
a, a hot inter or a hot radiator, a hot intercooler, hot oil cooler in front of all that stuff, as well as a bumper and then wind and all that. It, it, I don't think the, the eBay fans could keep up just because the size of the motor is just so much smaller. And this is really heavy duty. So it, 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 it maintains that constant, you know, the RPM throughout the whole, you know, whether there's a lot of resistance in front of it or not any at all, they spin about the same speed. Another issue that, that comes to mind when people are talking about, you know, their drift cars overheating is I noticed for the most part, anybody who's having issues with their car getting hot, they don't have any sort of ducting at all. So you see right here, this is a little bit bent because, you know, I ran into a wall, but, uh, but you can see right there, I have this little tray. It's all enclosed in the bash bar. So I have my oil cooler right here. I have the power steering cooler, the inner cooler, and then a little bit of radiator right there. But uh, on the sides right here, I have these little plates as well. And then on the top, I should have something. But the way my hood is, it, it fits like crap anyhow. So I don't think it would really, really matter and it would look weird. But if my hood actually fit, sit, sat flush with this, I would run another piece of this, uh, you know, like a panel, like going up there. So that basically, as soon as the radiator went through the nose of my bumper, please excuse the bumper too, but so as soon as it went through the bumper, the only place it could go is through the radiator and then out through the hood vents or, you know, up through the back of the hood. So now I have my, uh, my bumper on, but you can see right here, if I didn't have that little chunk right there, I mean, this, this, this is blocking a lot of air. So the airflow going to it isn't, isn't the best. You can see how my hood has this weird gap right there anyhow. So I'd have to make like a really weird looking panel to do that. But, uh, so essentially my theory is, is, you know, the, the air hits here, it wants to take the path of least resistance. So you're drifting sideways. That's, that's another issue is the, we'll use this as kind of an airflow angle meter. So if you're looking at the car and you're sliding sideways like this, you know, full, full lock or whatever you're sliding, you know, let's say like 30, 45 degrees, somewhere in there. So this air is coming in here like this. So if you think about it, like this whole thing is blocking. So that's blocking airflow. But then if you're going like that, if you don't have that panel in there, a lot of air is going right past that, right out here through the, you know, through the fender. So basically ducks is what I'm, I'm trying to get at, is you gotta have good ducks through your bumper so that the, the airflow that does go through here, it's doing its best job that it can. So right here, I've installed a little bit of tape to kind of show you exactly what the fans are doing. So I'm gonna go in, inside the car and, uh, and flip on the fans. You'll see the tape kind of start to move and then I'm gonna close the hood and you'll see, cause right now it's sucking air but it's also sucking air from the top right here. But uh, you'll see when I close the hood that it, it actually pulls the tape further in. So that should kind of, you know, explain a little, or just that'll, that'll show you how much is actually kind of flowing through there. And when, when my fans are on, since they're really good fans, um, they, they weren't badly priced either. I think they were like 270 bucks or something like that. Maybe cheaper. I'll put the link in the description, but, uh, you could feel through here. I mean, you could, you could definitely feel it across the top of your hand as well as through here. You could feel the fans sucking. Also, when you're, when I have my fans on, you could feel a lot of air coming in here because you could get the air in, but you have to get the air out as well. So that's why a lot of times you'll see this, you know, on the back of some cars, especially cars that don't have vents. And that's to let basically the air come out of the back here. And when I have the fans on, you could feel the, the hot air being pulled out through there as well. And I wouldn't have my hood spaced up like here, but this is a, you know, a cheap like Duraflex hood and the hood is actually flat versus having a, a little concave to it. So to get a good gap in the front, which it's not even, I don't even like it. I hate this hood, but, uh, 
I had to pop up the back or else I would have it just sitting flush and then just would be using these vents on here. So vented hood definitely helps. Okay, and then so a lot of the reason why people go rear mount radiator, like let's say in like an FDA or professional drift car, is space and weight distribution. Especially if you have a really heavy engine up here, like let's, you know, a 2JZ, big turbo setup, big intercooler, you want to kind of displace a little bit of that weight to the back of the car. So yeah, anyhow, I didn't want to do the whole rear mount radiator, you know, complicated setup. So uh, with my car, what I did is, you know, I did, I just tried to think of it how I kind of explained, and that was trying to put, you know, the ducts in it, doing everything, you know, and really good fans, as well as, so if you look right here, I have this little, like, Home Depot water sprayer in here. And this is just kind of a, uh, a quick little fix that we did at a drift event, um, just for, for fun, basically. I didn't really have the, the ducts in there for one event, because I had some plexiglass ones on the side, my car seemed like it was getting a little bit warmer. Um, so I have basically that sprayer is hooked up. You just reach over, get a few pumps. I have this thing right here. And then you could lock that on. You could give it a, a few little pumps or you could lock it on. And then you can see right here, it's spraying the... I'm trying to get my camera wet. But yeah, it's spraying basically the intercooler. It goes through the intercooler into the the radiator and then when I have my fans on uh -oh. it's uh you can actually feel it kind of sucking there's like a little bit of a mist coming out of the back but yeah when that when that's pulling the 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 little mist or the the water droplets through the, the intercooler and the radiator when it's hot it more so turns to steam and it's not like a mist and it just evaporates. So it, uh, that definitely helps out a lot. And I learned that little trick from uh, Masashi Yokoi. He, he's a guy that was in FD last year. He had the crazy S15, 2J VVTi, big turbo. He had big radiator, big intercooler, oil cooler, all that stuff up front. And then he had a big tank in the back and he actually had like a quality, uh, like a big pump, like sometimes like the ones that you'd see on like a water meth kit. And he had that with a couple different nozzles spraying his radiator and intercooler. And that's how he got away with, he's making like a thousand horsepower drifting. And you know, with a, a, basically the same setup, just a little bit, you know, a little, little bit oversized. Also another good thing to have on, on a drift car, just any car in general, is I have a, uh, a fan thermo switch. And it's, it's hooked up on the block. There's a, a factory fitting underneath there. But a lot of people can, can put them right up here. On, uh, on this car, this is that top one is the, the, the fan thermo switch. And I have the coolant temp gauge going into here. Um, but basically what that does is the fan will kick on and off by itself. So that you don't have to like, you know, especially in a drift car situation where you have to turn your fans on. If you don't, like your car is going to overheat and you're in the heat of the moment and you're, you're drifting and uh, you definitely don't want to blow up your car. So that's why I did a fan thermo switch on my car and I have an override button too so I could kick them on at, at low, low temperature. Another thing that the fan thermo switch helps with is uh, actually letting your engine warm up to full operating temperature. If you're running like E85 or uh, you know, your, your motor's kind of loose and you need to burn out basically all that excess fuel or water that gets uh, trapped in your, your actually crankcase. So a lot of times like when a car's warming up that's like running on E85, if you're looking in the catch can setup, you'll see it kind of sitting there like smoking out of there and that's water vapor. So you have to let your engine warm up to a certain point so that it, it burns out or you know releases all that water vapor because you don't want that stuff in your oil either. So yeah, to give, to give an example of uh, kind of what some people do that kind of I feel like causes them a lot of issues is on like K's and SR's, uh, this is a, a K radiator with this 1J swap, but you can't keep the factory like centrifugal uh, clutch, like fan. But this is like the your typical, you know, eBay, um, you know, ISR, you know, Mishimoto, whatever type of fan. And it uses the same style, like small, here, let me, let me grab this. So it uses the same style, like small, you know, like 11 inch, 12 inch fans with that really, really small motor that, you know, doesn't really pull a lot of CFM in a high resistance situation. So 
These fans work really, really good, especially even with the Jay-Z swap on a street car that you're not drifting it sideways and bouncing it against the rev limiter and doing a bunch of crazy stuff for, you know, continuously. Um, so a lot of people when they do, they swap to these style of fans on like a K and an SR is they still have issues because they don't do the ducting. Um, here with this this bumper from the factory, I went ahead and I reattached the, the bumper. So that basically once it goes through the bumper, it still has to go through there. Um, and this could could probably use a cooling plate, but just a street car so it doesn't get too hot or doesn't ever get hot, you know, on the street or doing anything like that. But you have to have a shroud, uh, which those fans do good at. And you can't just stick a, a fan on a radiator and expect to have, you know, good things. So this is a 2JZ radiator. I think this is out of an NA. A lot of guys, they stick with the, the factory, like the, the clutch type fan set up and uh, basically as soon as it gets hot it kicks on and there's like a like a heat based like clutch in there so when it's cool and the car's warming up it's not spinning very fast but as soon as it gets hot it kind of locks itself into place so that's why if you uh you know listen to a car when it's hot like that it'll sound like a, a damn like a truck like a, a semi truck driving down the road it'll, all you'll hear is fan but yeah here is a a power stroke 7.3 power stroke uh, diesel but uh i'm just showing you the whole clutch fan setup so this spins freely, I have a radiator hose banging it, but basically in here there's like a heat type of clutch thing, and as soon as it gets hot, you know, because this is right on the water pump, as soon as it gets hot it locks itself into place, and uh, so that's why, and you know, that pulls a, a hellacious amount of CFM compared to like a electric fan setup. So for the most part, if, if, if what I would recommend is if you could get away with it, I would leave the factory style clutch fan on your like K, SR, uh, RB, JZ if you could fit it. But uh, if not, you're gonna have to get some really, really high dollar, uh, high quality fans. Um, and there is some decent setups out there for a reasonable price. But, so yeah, that's, uh, I think that's gonna conclude my whole little rant about drift car cooling issues. Hopefully some tips, so hopefully you guys learned some stuff. Um, you know, uh, let, let me know in the comments section down below what uh, what you guys do, if you guys have any issues or have had issues and what you've been able to do to, uh, to kind of combat those ones. Um, I'm gonna switch to an electric pump style on here so I don't have to, to reach over and give this thing the, the pump. But that does help my car cool down a lot, a lot better after a run, especially a back-to-back, -back, you know, tandem runs if you're going like one more time or something like that. But, uh, but that's definitely nice when you're sitting in line, it just helps it cool down a lot faster. My car will cool itself down. Um, th that's kind of how you could tell if your, your cooling system is successful, is if you're still sitting in line, it's like 100 degrees, your car gets up to like 230, 240, and it cools itself back down while it's sitting there, not moving. So that's, uh, that's kind of a success. So my car will cool itself down, but uh, that's why I do have the extra little water sprayer on it. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, like I said, if you have any other tips or uh, you know issues, you know, be sure to leave a comment down below. I'm sure I could get on there and help you, or some other people can. So, if you guys have never seen my videos before, never seen this thing drifting, be sure to uh, check out check it out. I've got a lot of videos on it. I got the whole swap process, and uh, you know, the I'm sure you guys are going to be excited for the Supra here coming up. I got me a little little rice bumper on it, but uh, yeah, thanks again for watching.